What's up, y'all? It's your favorite do-it-yourself doofus, TJ, out here in the Fake It or Make It shop. This video is going to be about refinishing and restoring this old Lane Cedar Hope chest. If you look at the serial number on the bottom of one of these Cedar Hope chests, all you have to do to get the date is take that serial number and flip it around. You have to read the serial number backwards. So in this case, the number is 649140. So instead, to get the actual date of this thing, you would read it backwards. So it'd actually be 041964. So the fourth month, the 19th day, and the year of 1946. So this thing is actually pretty old, but it is in outstanding shape for the age it's it is. It does have some blemishes, some typical wear marks for the age of this thing on the corners and the edges, but the veneer is really still really intact. There is, it's not peeling off or blowing off the, and everything is still nice and tight and glued to the cedar that constructs the inside of this thing. It's a really nice chest, but we have to be really careful when we decide what we're going to do with restoring it the first issue is is that the veneer on these things is really thin veneer is inherently thin so you don't want to just go at this thing really aggressively with sandpaper as you could blow through the veneer itself and then you have got a serious problem i'm going to take you down off the tripod and we're going to have a look inside, show you what it looks like and see it, show you how beautiful this thing still is after all these years. Okay, as you can see, this is the quintessential lane from Alta Vista, Virginia. Um, the logo there. And still has all the st original stamping, all intact. The felt is in really excellent condition. The inside of this thing is practically pristine. This wood is just in such beautiful shape. And we have the brass gasket around the edges, still in good shape. We'll clean all that up. Just have a little bit of dirt and stuff that you would expect in something this old. And down here, you have the pressure tested for aroma tightness here. And they would actually, I think, pressure test these things. So another thing to think about is if you have a small kid or small children in your house, these older ones will lock so if your kids are playing and they get trapped in here these things are airtight so you want to make sure that you either leave it locked to where they can't get in it or you can actually order or call lane i don't know if that's still available now in the, in 2022 but there for a while you could call them and they would send you a modern lock mechanism and it has a way that you can open it from the inside kind of like a like a trunk of a car it has a safety feature that you pull the little latch and it will open but this one does not have that so that's something to definitely keep in mind the old keyhole here needs to be cleaned up but everything is nice and tight and in really good shape down here at the bottom we do have some defect in the finish because, I mean, that's where, you know, it's going to take the most contact is around this little toe board that goes all the way around it because that's at foot level. The first thing I want to do is there's a lot of grime and, and dust and filth down in these crevices 
in the seams and all over. So I want to take this mineral spirits first and go ahead and wipe this whole thing down and get it nice and clean and get all the filth off of it that I possibly can. I went and I cleaned this entire box with mineral spirits, let the mineral spirits completely evaporate, and then got it all nice and dry, blew all that loose stuff off, got down in the nooks and crannies with that, cleaned it. Um, and now I'm going to take the paint stripper, the antique furniture paint stripper, the one that's for detail areas, and start working around the rim and on top of the lid and get some of these, get get this old finish off and get into these nooks and crannies because that's going to take a little while. Yo, buddy. Yo. Yo, buddy. Hey. Hey, down here. Down here. Down here. Yeah. Hey. Don't look over there. Look over here. Hey, what are you looking over there Is anybody for? else seeing these cartoon characters in hey, here? who the hell are you calling a cartoon character? I don't remember inviting any cartoon characters to the shop. I'm, you I'm trying me. to do a video here. You're hallucinating. Yeah. What? You're hallucinating. Oh, I'm hallucinating. Yeah. Wait, why am I hallucinating? Yeah. Oh, I probably... Yeah, you're now, probably right. Now you get it. Now you get it. <coughs> I should probably crack a window <coughs> and put a <coughs> mask on. <Don't> <coughs> you idiot. You big <coughs> Okay, I got a good solid wet coat of the stripper onto the lid here and I'm gonna let it set for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna come back in here and try and start scraping. I've already scraped a little bit on this uh, dental mold piece that's really time consuming. So hopefully the top will start you know, lifting that old finish a little bit faster and I can just go through there and scrape all these large areas off real quick. scratches have paint stuck in these scratches so I'm gonna have to go around and very gently remove the old paint from these scratches because at one time somebody had actually painted this like these little nicks right here they have paint in them so I need to try and get all of that stuff out of there, all of that paint. And yes, it is going to be a nightmare. So I'm just trying to get all of the excess paint like out of the grain of the veneer without destroying the veneer. The rest of the chest doesn't have, wasn't painted because I can't find any paint on the chest down on the bottom. So Hopefully this will be the only thing that I actually have to strip all of the finish off of. So I'm just gonna keep at it and we'll come back and check in on me here in just a little bit. So now <clears throat> that I have as much of the paint off of the trim around the bottom area all the way around, this is a, it's a type of veneer. It's, it, it's, it's shaped into this the way it is now. And then there's a, a frame piece behind it. 
So this is a pretty thick piece of wood. So I've just been going over it many times with the airplane stripper, the paint stripper, and then coming back and scraping it with the razor blade. And I'm going to let that kind of chill out for a little bit because my hands are tired. And next, I'm going to use some of this Diablo brand sand net sandpaper on my orbital sander this is 220 this stuff is really good because it doesn't clog up and you get a lot more use out of one of these sheets than you will conventional sandpaper and i've come to find that anything that has the brand name diablo on it is really good especially their thick metal sawzall blades you cannot beat them we use them at work every day and that's the best sawzall blade you can find so your sandpaper is also good so I'm just going to use this 220 to start going over the lid to try and see what it looks like and smooth out some of these rough, rough areas and see if it gums up. Because if it gums up to sandpaper, then that means that I still have some finish left on here. It's kind of hard to tell because whenever I put the stripper on this and scrape it off, it's just brown, like a brown colored like syrupy type thing. So I think it's trying to pull the stain out. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it with this 220 very lightly and very carefully and see what I come up with. So I lightly went over the, the lid with this 220 sand net sandpaper. And as you can see, that there's still quite a bit of stuff on the surface here. And that's gumming up the sandpaper. So... I'm not really sure if I should go ahead and hit it with a fresh sheet and see if this was just residual from the uh, stripping that we was doing on the lid and if there's any more left. Um, it kind of feels like there might be some, but uh, if there is, if I take another piece and put it up there and it gums up again, then I'm going to have to continue to try and strip this stuff off. It just really seem to me like it's really slow going and i'm not it doesn't feel like whenever i'm removing the sludge that is the the paint stripper that it's really removing a lot it doesn't seem like it's really just bubbling up and pulling it out and i've tried both the antique furniture the thinner more watery stripper and what i've been using uh for the most part is the thicker general purpose jelly type paint stripper so I'm going to continue on, put another fresh sheet on here, and see if I get even more gumming of the next sheet of sandpaper. Also, you want to be sure to blow out the sand net. It will get dirty, but the cool thing is that you can clean it right out. All that dust and, and stuff that builds up and accumulates in the sandpaper will blow out. And conversely, Go ahead and give your work piece a little, I'm not going to say it, I know y'all want me to say blowjob, but I'm not going to say it, a nice little, just a nice little one of those. Alright, back to work stupid. Okay, so here's where we're at. The lid and the three sides are pretty much good to go. Now I'm down here at the very bottom at the tow board, this trim around the side, and I'm trying to get all of this paint and crap and old finish from between these teeth on this dental mold and I'm also have some soaking on the lid uh, dental mold the trim going around the lid the perimeter of the lid so this is the part that's taking uh, a really long time having to go back get as much as I can with each coat of stripping and then come back 
get a layer off and then reapply it. So it's really time consuming. Don't think that just because you're using the stripper that it's gonna be really fast. It's not, it's gonna take a long time if there's a whole bunch of paint and finish on whatever you're working on. So just take your time, wear your safety glasses. I'm sure there was a few times I forgot to put my safety glasses on and my mask on, but your safety glasses are extremely critical in this because if you're using a brush, if you're using a brush and you flick it and the stuff goes in your eye, don't ask me how I know, but it does burn. So make sure that you, if you are using this stuff, at least keep some eye wash on hand just for safety precaution. If you do slip up, forget to put your uh, eye protection on. Uh, so just keep that stuff in mind. The stuff will burn you. And I have a red mark here on my arm where I kind of got my arm into it. So just be real careful with this stuff and take your time. So I'm gonna let this sit for a while and then come back in and start stripping it but that's going to be for tomorrow. I'll go ahead and tell you right now, it's not difficult, but it is tedious and mind-numbingly boring and aggravating. So if you do something like this and you start getting frustrated, just take a break. Because if you don't, you're going to tear something up that you can't fix. So, while I'm letting the stripper sit on the feet right now, uh, I decided to come work on the trunk lid, but <clears throat> I'll show you. Right here, it has a little cove. It, it's got a bead, and then it drops down to a flat, pretty much a 90, and I was able to take my blade and scrape that out. And after it comes off of this little shelf, it goes into a cove and then back to a straight 90 degree angle to the chest. So this tiny little cove, I've been trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with that. And then I had an idea. I have a bunch of these old uh, cheap whetstones and it, and it will mess your whetstone up. You'll have to resurface it. I don't have a surfacing block, but I really don't care because I have a ton of these. You take your razor blade and then I just started trying to match that same profile of the cove and so I would check it go back hit it again and then finally it started matching and now I'm able to get all of that crap out of that cove now some of you may be thinking well that's kind of rough on the wood it is it is rough on the wood but it's not removing enough of the wood to make a difference and I will be able to get a small sanding block wrapped around a small dowel and go in there and get that rough raised grain back flat because otherwise whenever I was using the brass brush it was not removing it it was just moving it around so I found that scraping gently with the razor blade it was my best bet and I can always go back and smooth that stuff out. And this is just the fastest way that I found to remove all of that old finish and that old paint that is down deep in the bottom of these little nooks and crannies. Also, before I get back to work on this, public safety announcement. This stripper and this stripper will make your manhood burn just as fast as the ones that are wearing glitter and too much perfume that you find downtown. So make sure that if you gotta go to the outhouse, make sure that your hands are clean 
and you don't have any residual stripper on any part of your body that you're going to touch your eyes or maybe even a more sensitive area of your body so don't ask me how I know I might know a guy that knows a guy that maybe he did something to which he lit a part of his body on fire that he wished he wouldn't have I'm not saying it was me but it seems like sound advice to maybe you know make sure that you don't have stripper on your hands before you go to the restroom just saying okay that was awkward okay I'm going back to work now gotten to where I've made a little bit of progress so far I've kind of figured a few things out and the best way to go about trying to get down into these little crevices on this molding and I have some 150 grit sandpaper here and I have a thin probably I don't know quarter inch ripping off of a two before and you know how on you know store-bought lumber it's got the the corners are kind of rounded over almost like this one almost has a perfect round over like you almost went down it with a router bit and I initially used, was using this as a sanding block and then I got to thinking that this rounded over edge fits perfectly in this tiny little cove and so this tiny little cove is really shallow so the best thing that I come up with was I, I find kind of a good angle to work with get it down to where it matches the cove and just slowly and lightly as straight as I possibly can with as much control as I possibly can and, and slide it back and forth and that is really getting me a nice finish in that those tight areas alternatively there's a nice little 90 degree shelf right here on this bead and you can take the sandpaper flip it over set it down on there the best you can and lightly go back and forth and hit that little shelf on both sides and just going in between each tooth and making this into kind of like a little file almost getting in between the teeth and just going all around and getting all that gunky dark uh, film off of it and get down to bare wood the best way I can and uh, it's actually working out pretty good I did tape off this lid so that you catch this top edge of this uh, molding I need to put another piece of tape here and just working my way around and I feel like I'm really making some good progress now um, it's been really slow going so I, I'm just trying to hang in there the starting to get hot already so it's pretty warm in the shop got the fan going so I, I just I can't just leave the camera rolling because you would have to hear all the fan and the radio and the air conditioning and all that crap so I just do a little bit and I come back and check in, so let me get back to work. 